today's topic will be about uh, uh, how we can keep uh, the, uh, how we can keep cloud native resources secure using open policy agent and while we are doing that we will also be touching on OPA fundamentals uh, to to get you quickly into a policy writing state uh, so that you could benefit it from your organization as well. Um, so briefly looking at agenda, uh, as, as I said, uh, we'll be making an introduction to OPA and we will try to find answers to why OPA, like why is organizations uh, preferring OPA as first pick solution as they switch to cloud uh, more and more. And uh, also, while we are doing that, I will show you some real-world examples that you can use uh, uh, in, or in your organizations as well. Uh, this will be referring uh, real-world scenarios. Uh, and then also we'll be uh, looking at writing and executing rego policies while doing that. And we'll conclude and also look at, look at takeaways. Uh, briefly about me. Uh, Boran Sheref, uh, working as software engineer since 2015. Uh, in, to, in 2019, I joined Red Hat uh, to SRE team. Uh, I was in platform team, uh, and recently I switched to late products. I'm an OPA member uh, since 2020. Uh, I was recognized and uh, invited to organization after making some regular contributions to ConfTest and OPA as well. I'm finally interested in uh, my interest, uh, Golang, as you can imagine, Shell, uh, SRE DevOps topic, and of course, Generative AI. <laughs> and uh, if you like to take a look uh, to my profile and say just hello, uh, my LinkedIn and uh, GitHub profile. Uh, so yeah, let's make an introduction to OPA. Uh, let's, start with the defining, let's start with defining the problem first. Uh, uh, so that we can understand uh, more deeply. Uh, so uh, what is the problem? So we see the trend that as the organization switching to switching their resources to cloud more and more, uh, securing those applications becomes paramount, becomes the first priority to think about, uh, because uh, uh, compared to the other applications living in the architecture, uh, uh, like the, the applications that, that were living in air-gapped environment is a bit different than the applications uh, running on cloud. And we need to think about security more uh, to keep them compliant with the rest of uh, our architecture. And uh, also, uh, we need to uh, think about reducing the attack surface somehow. Um, uh, so in that uh, perspective, like, uh, uh, we need uh, uh, we need to apply policies to brand new applications as we do in in uh, um, private uh, private clouds, the applications running in private cloud, and uh, and the first thing really comes to mind for those applications is to implement all of those security requirements service by service, application by application. Um, uh, but this is this is costly, right? Uh, because uh, uh, because uh, um, because otherwise uh, we need to implement all of these uh, requirements service by service. Meaning, like uh, one of them could be written in Python and the other one could be written in Java, but the security requirements will need to be put in next to our business code, uh, which is not uh, providing a standalone solution for all security type of requirements. So our goal is uh, to create organization level uh, centralized, visible, trackable, and transparent policies running across a heterogeneous environment. And also, uh, I almost forgot, like uh, with the recent promising news from Generative AI, I would say developing an application is not that hard, but the security requirements are still valid, right? Um, so Open Policy Agent comes to play at that stage uh, uh, so it's open source, general purpose, uh, uh, and the flexibility and extensibility comes from Rego, actually, which is a domain-specific language developed within Open Policy Agent, which allows you to inject dynamic inputs uh, to to your uh, to your evalu evaluation stage, and then you can uh, make assertions uh, based on your input, uh, based on your dynamic input. Uh, it's written in Go, uh, uh, 
can be used, so it can be used by importing the library as a decision maker in your application. Uh, but also it's available as binary on each platform, so maybe you could use it as a sidecar in Kubernetes environment, which is the way Gatekeeper is doing, or you could externally write policies against any kind of structured data uh, using Rego abstraction, which is the way Confidence is doing. And also it's available as WebAssembly, meaning like if you give uh, the policy to uh, uh, to open policy agent and if you specify the output as a WebAssembly, it will give you the output so that you, in, you can integrate into WebAssembly environment. And all of this is to decoupling policy decision making from enforcement so that you won't need to put these requirements next to your business code. So let's quickly look at use cases that I uh, uh, drafted for you today. Uh, I picked three examples today to show you OPA in action. First, uh, we are going to be talking about how uh, we can establish a supply chain security mechanism using OPA, and we'll be writing tests against SBOM, software bill of materials. And secondly, we'll be looking at policy enforcement in Kubernetes, uh, the way Gatekeeper is doing, uh, and we'll be looking at pretty uh, classic example, rejecting uh, images from disallowed registries. And for the third one, uh, we'll be talking about how we can uh, shift the security left, uh, how we can integrate it into our pipeline so that we can get a better, faster signaling uh, for those security uh, compliance and requirements without uh, even looking at the cloud environments. Uh, so first, uh, yeah, let's talk about first use case. It's about uh, establishing a supply chain security, as I talked. Um, so let's, let me give you a brief introduction about SPOM. Uh, so SPOM is a kind of inventory that lists all the uh, components, versions, libraries, uh, or license used in a software, um, in an used in a software application. And there are ways to generate SPOM. Uh, uh, for instance, you could use SIFT, uh, you could use CycloneDX, you could use OWASP uh, to create a JSON uh, that contains all the, all the components with, with, their, uh, with, their, with their vulnerabilities version and all the necessary uh, informations. Um, so we are looking at a, a, a brief JSON here. Uh, some attributes, like I trimmed down some attributes. There might be more like a Cyclone Dakes or version related one here. But briefly, like we will be focusing on the components part to be able to write policy. So in component section, we have two components, uh, and one of them containing a high severity vulnerability. So now we are looking at Rego example here. Uh, it's pretty brief. Uh, so you could, uh, uh, one could write a rego policy like that in this form. Uh, so first we are defining a main and then we are importing the in so that we can iterate over uh, the substructure here. Uh, so each component, uh, so we are, the input refers to the JSON uh, that I previously showed you, shown. Uh, and, uh, and the component is referring to each component um, that we picked. Um, and each component has, uh, like each component could have multiple vulnerabilities listed here, right? Uh, so again, we are uh, we are getting this, uh, we are obtaining these uh, attributes uh, one by one, uh, which is the uh, which gives you the uh, which is an abstraction Rego gives you, so you don't need to handle the iterations. And then we are uh, checking if vulnerability severity equals to one of, uh, this means like, uh, again, we are uh, defining the severity levels that, are, that should alert us. And we are getting those severities one by one and checking if one of them is uh, matching. And if, if there is a match, we are printing a message. So, so if you could run this uh, with conf test, you would see this input like component A uh, contains a vulnerability, which is high severity. Um, so in the, in the second example, we'll be looking at a Kubernetes environment, uh, the way we handle uh, policies in Gatekeeper. So Gatekeeper is uh, introducing one CRD named constraint template, which you can uh, use to define other CRDs 
containing, re containing rego. And uh, now we are defining a violation instead of a deny rule uh, that we, we have shown in the, in the previous example. Um, and the important thing is here, there, there are two inputs, right, injected into Rego. One is uh, referring to the object, the API, the, open the Kubernetes API server is received, uh, input.review. And the other one uh, is input.parameters.repos that will come from the CRD that will, that will define here so that we can you know, define additional parameters that will be used in Rego here. And again, we are uh, going very similar approach, like following a similar approach. We are getting the satisfied ones. And if we don't have any satisfied, we are uh, uh, printing an error message like, like here. So this will be denied by, uh, because gatekeeper works as, act as uh, admission controller, and it can uh, reject uh, request uh, being sent to API server if it's not valid with, with your policies, if it's in compliance with policies. And for that case, the, as you can see, the disallowed port comes from disallowed.registry.io, so which is not one of the ones we introduced here, so it should fail. And yeah, for the last example, and also I'm seeing three minutes left, um, which is nice. Um, so on third example, we are looking at uh, how we can establish a compliance as code uh, mechanism using CI CD pipelines. So as, assume, like looking at uh, this uh, Terraform uh, HCL file. This would be applied, right? There is no, uh, like from syntax correctness point of view, there is no issue, right? Um, like the S3 bucket would, would get created normally. But with, with ConfTest, you cannot. You cannot run this. Uh, you cannot execute or apply this because this is violating the, um, the policy that each one of the resource should have these two uh, tags so that we could use uh, them for cost calculations, tracking purposes, et cetera, right? That, that might be a policy. Uh, and as we can see, we just forgot to uh, uncomment the owner. Uh, and and ConfTest is actually just uh, catching this immediately without, uh, before we apply it to uh, production or cloud or AWS even. So how can we write a policy uh, against this structure, right? Um, so a regular policy, an example regular policy would look like that. We are again defining the required text here. And uh, missing text is uh, actually a kind of function um, uh, taking resources parameter. And, uh, and also it's getting uh, fed uh, by text one by one here. And resource means like the parameter that we taken here. And if one of the sub attributes, sub attributes, not one of them, uh, environment or owner, uh, this is actually the tag is actually a tuple like data structure. Um, so you could store all of these in in uh, in this and just return uh, if there are multiple ones. And also the important point is like uh, we are. Uh, filtering the AWS rel related ones so that, uh, for instance, uh, uh, imagine our HCL containing both uh, resource AWS underscore and Azure blah blah. Uh, so it could uh, contain multiple uh, resource for different clouds. Uh, and in Rego policy, we can also, uh, you know, s uh, specifically look for AWS ones or, a or Azure ones, like we can make some filtering like that. And, and yeah, um, and takeaways and conclusions, um, as long as you have a JSON compatible input, you could write policy against any kind of data, file system, file system, NoSQL databases, gRPC, or configuration types uh, that you can imagine, any kind of. Uh, and uh, Rego, Rego is specialized for assertions, lookups, or iterations against uh, dynamic inputs. Uh, but it's, uh, the important part here is that it's non-Turing, meaning not each type of uh, computation can be performed using Rego, but uh, mostly, the, um, um, the, mostly the assertions can be made. 
and uh, OPA is available finally, uh, the final item is OPA is available as library, but you can use it also binary or uh, WebAssembly modules for standalone solutions, which is the way Gatekeeper and Confidence is doing. That's all from me. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, uh, feel free to reach out to me either via Slack on yeah. Open Policy Agent channels or via email, it doesn't matter. Yeah, or in thanks. The hall, by the way. <laughs> yeah, or in the hall. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank thanks. you.